This is the scene of a homicide, ma'am, not a circus. Welcome back to my dark corner of this sick world. What's wrong? Don't you like you your pussy wussy anymore? It's not often that we review sequels, and this week is no exception. What the hell are you talking about? Chosen by one of our Patreon shadows, The Executioner Part 2 has no Part 1. Part 2 was apparently added to give it some spurious connection to 1980's The Exterminator, which has a very similar plot. Sarge! I'll get you out of here, Sarge! In Vietnam, wounded soldier Roger is saved by his buddy Mike, and we segue into the mean streets of LA. Roger is now a cop, but his life is being made difficult by a vigilante. There are rumors on the street that someone called the executioner has been committing these crimes. Yes, the police are well aware of these rumors. There's certainly a lot of crime about. Come on, bitch! Although, you've got to admire the gang member who dusts down the wall before the assault. That's just good manners. But in the building below... Oh, well, somebody's got to help oh, him. Uh, <laughs> the executioner has a no-nonsense approach to crime fighting. Uh, I'm your cherry. I'm your executioner. We also meet Roger's daughter, Laura. That math test sure was the pits. It was dumb. Acting and script working in harmony to really capture the reality. But Laura has a problem. No dough, no stuff. Despite living with her dad, going to school and having no obvious money worries, she can't afford her dope. Don't you know that hustling pays really good? There's a solution, but Laura's not keen. You're disgusting. Hey, we drug dealing pimps have feelings too, you know. Dope. This is bad news for Pete the Pimp, because this typical 80s bad guy... Chicks call me the tattoo man. ...has alienated every prostitute in L.A. And, oh, God forbid Pete set you up with the tattoo man. And Pete is under pressure to find someone new. Hope so. For your sake. <laughs> Why would you put the gun under his arm? We also have hard-nosed reporter Celia. If you want to break the executioner case, you need all the help you can get. Whose struggles with a second language subscribers will recognize from our review of Frozen Scream. I'm very busy now, and you seem to know more about my students than I do, so if you'll excuse me. That covers pretty much every 80s action movie base, except the sleazy strip club. which we can assume was beyond the budget. Pete sets his sights on Laura, who is particularly desirable. Take a look at the last American virgin! Come on. This is Laura's best friend, Kitty, who is full of good advice. I know better things to do than college and a, and a stupid job. Back to the executioner. That's all I ask, you damn slime. In amongst all this is Roger's old buddy, Mike. Who's that? Who's that? Still having flashbacks to Nam and dealing with local street punks. <laughs> It'd certainly be a surprise if he was the executioner. Oh, yes. So, my best friend, the guy who saved my life in Vietnam, turns out to be the executioner. I'll be honest, I'm struggling here because this is all over the place and it's all so inept. The film is dealing with real issues and is trying to take them seriously, but the gang violence looks like an amateur production of West Side Story after the choreographer quit. Its take on addiction misses some of the nuance. I wish this were coke. Oh, heavenly coke. <laughs> While prostitution shoots just wide of reality. Girls, meet my new chick. <laughs> also, the director seems to have a fetish for torn clothes. Oh. Ow. Ow. Then there is the executioner. He's doing a better job of fighting crime than the police. Whether it's Batman or the Exterminator, vigilantes exist in a moral grey area. They're breaking the law, but they're taking out the crooks. That doesn't apply when they're just plain nuts. 
All the way, Sarge! All the way! All the way! All the way! All the way! I don't feel like the streets are safer. Charlie must die! But I think we can all see where this is heading. Kitty sees Laura being kidnapped. <laughs> Unable to reach Roger, she leaves reporter Celia a message. And leaves it at that. Celia also doesn't call the police. She calls to the executioner mobile. Ah, <laughs> oh, damn it, this never happens to Batman. <laughs> there are people who stack cardboard boxes in LA alleyways for just this reason. But is he in time to save Laura from a date with the Tattoo Man? Uh, not even close. But the Executioner is really more about vengeance than prevention, and he wails on the Tattoo Man as he begs for mercy. Wait a minute, wait a minute. We can make a deal. Repeatedly. I get money. I don't Help have the cash for it. Oh, I, I don't have my wallet. I'll write your check! Oh. Or a wire transfer? What are your bank details? <laughs> uh, feels like innocent people could have been hurt there. He practically blows up an entire city block. And he saved my daughter. Yeah, she came out of this real well. Roger sets out to find Mike, but will he arrest him? You could never take me. Oh, never mind arresting him. Just get the poor man the help he so desperately needs. There's not much to say. The fights are surprisingly competent. Everything else is astoundingly not. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to choose a film for us to review, then join us on Patreon as a shadow. What other cinematic vigilantes are a danger to themselves and others? Let us know in the comments below. Oh, I don't know. I got some great stuff at my house. Want to go? You do? Uh-huh. Let's go! <laughs>